Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Chia Savari, and uh, I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at School of Chemical Engineering. My presentation title is Lagrangian Recurrences and Novel Methods for uh, Mixing Description. In this presentation, at first, uh, I talked about the, the mixing process and uh, its importance uh, in the fluid mechanics and industry. After that, uh, uh, I talk about our experiments followed by our data analysis methods. Uh, at the end, I will present a few slides of our results. Okay, mixing uh, actually is a process uh, which is, is reducing non-uniformities non to achieve a desired process results. These non-uniformities or in homogeneity can be concentration, uh, different phases or temperature. Uh, failure to provide the necessary mixing may result in several uh, manufacturing problems. So uh, it is an important uh, process industry. Mixing has a, a large number of applications in different industries such as uh, fine chemicals, pharmaceutical, personal, home care products, paper and pulps, polymers and food industries. Uh, several techniques uh, have been uh, developed over the years for obtaining qualitative and quantitative measurements of uh, fluid flow in mixing processes. All, all previous uh, mixing measurement techniques are based on the Eulerian approach. The inherent Eulerian nature of uh, such measurement methods does not allow uh, ready access to the Lagrangian character of the flow or the structures present uh, in, the, uh, in, in the system. Also, Eulerian data are crucial. Uh, Lagrangian information is necessary uh, within, uh, uh, for the whole description of the mixing phenomena. Uh, positron emission particle tracking uh, allows non-invasive probing of opaque fluid uh, within uh, uh, OPEC uh, apparatus by using a, a single sub millimeter uh, positron emitting particle as a flow tracer. And this technique can provide three dimensional space and time uh, like Rangian trajectory of the flow. Uh, PEPT methods compared to the other uh, uh, measuring methods such as a laser uh, Doppler velocimetry or LDV or, or uh, particle image velocimetry or PIV uh, has a, a, a lot of advantages uh, and uh, this um, uh, methods PEPT can give us a Lagrangian view of our mixing processes. So at first uh, I will uh, try to talk about our experimental section. Our setup uh, was an agitated tank with diameter of almost uh, 29 centimeter impeller diameter of the tank uh, 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 is half of the, the, the tank diameter of bottom clearance of the impeller is 25, 25% uh, uh, of the tank diameter. Tank height is equal to the tank diameter and uh, uh, we have used the single phase experiments and we have used water as a as our fluid in the system. And uh, we have tried multi-phase flow, but I'm not going to present our result for multi-phase flow, uh, which we have used water and glass beads in different concentrations. Uh, we have used three types of impellers, which I will talk about them in the result sections. And we have used a small positron emitting labeled particle tracer uh, as a follow, uh, flow follower to track the liquid behavior. Uh, but before I go through the uh, other detail of ex experimental sections, uh, I, I want to talk uh, a little about the, the positron emission technique principles. As you know, at atomic scales, uh, we have a neutron, proton, and electron. Some unstable nucleides uh, is converted uh, is converted into a neutron while releasing a positron uh, uh, 
uh, while, while releasing a positron and electron neutrino. This is actually positron emission or beta plus decay, which is a subtype of radioactive decay called beta decay. This released positron and electron can collide each other uh, and this collision convert the electron and positron in gamma rays. Uh, so this collision is called positron electron inhalation, which produces two back to back gamma rays. If we are be able to detect this uh, back to back gamma rays by special detectors, we can find 3D positions of the tracer at any time. So we can track the tracer by time and uh, eventually we can have a 3D time uh, and space positions. Output of uh, our experimental are text files which contains uh, four columns. The first one is time, the second one uh, and uh, third and fourth is, is, is the X, Y and Z, uh, which is the 3D dimensionals, 3D, dimen 3D positions of uh, our traces. So we can find a lot of information from these 3D dimensions. We can, uh, about the, how we labeled or how we activate our tracers. Uh, uh, as I said before, we have used a labeled particle tracer for liquid uh, phase. The tracer particle is labeled with a positron emitting nuclide and the radio isotope which we have used here is a fluorine 18. Here at first the pure water is uh, bombarded by the high energy of helium beams from the cyclotron. By this bombardment the oxygen 16 atoms of water are converted to the fluorine 18 which is a fluorine 18 is, is, is a positron emitting nuclide. After that, fluorine 18 ions were absorbed by a small ion exchange resin, which its size is uh, 300 micrometers. So uh, we have a, a, a tracer with the size of 300 microns and we can put in, in the system and we can track the, uh, the liquids and we can have a 3D dimensional of our the system. Here, uh, uh, as I said, our uh, text files uh, of our uh, PEPT experiments uh, contains the uh, three-dimensional and uh, we can track the radioactive tracers uh, during the system, in the, in, in the system. And if we, uh, if we run this system for about 40 or 45 minutes of time, we can have a whole 3D locations in the tank for the liquid uh, flow. Then we can analyze these 3D locations by different data analysis methods. Uh, the first and the simplest one is we can easily, we can uh, uh, convert this uh, Cartesian to the cylindrical methods and we can calculate the velocity in different uh, uh, directions. And uh, then we can plot the velocity, for example, in, in the system by if we put a mesh in the uh, 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 in the system and we can plot the velocity in each cells, which is a very basic uh, analysis of the system. Uh, but here I'm, uh, I want to talk about the, uh, our analysis methods which we have used uh, in our system. The methods which we have used uh, here for analysis of data is named recurrence plots, which is actually based on the Poincaré recurrence theorem. In this uh, work, we firstly calculated the distance between every two points of the trajectories. So for a trajectory of n data points, we can have a matrix of with the size of n by n, named distance matrix. As you may know, for distance calculations, there are different calculations such as maximum norm, minimum norm, and so on. Here we have used the, uh, the uh, the Euclidean, Euclidean distance, uh, which is the most common use for definition of the, uh, of the distances. So after that, when we calculated the distance matrix for our trajectory, we can convert it to a, a, a plot named recurrence plot. And this recurrence plot was proposed by Ekman in, in 1987. And the, the, the method named recurrence plots, and it is a method for to visualize the recurrences of uh, our dynamical system. 
the distance matrix calculated in the previous slide uh, are converted to recurrence matrix following these equations, following these equations. Uh, uh, in the recurrence matrix, if the distance between the two points is smaller than the radius threshold, then one stands uh, at the corresponding array of the recurrence matrix. Otherwise, if the distance between two points is larger than the radius threshold, then zero stands at the corresponding array of the uh, recurrence matrix. By these radius thresholds, distance matrix are converted to the recurrence matrix. And here is the number of the considered states. Roughly speaking, the matrix uh, compares the states of a system at the time of i and j. If the states are similar, if the, red, the distance between these points is smaller than the radius threshold, this is indicated by a one in the matrix. If, uh, on the other hand, uh, the states are raised or different, the corresponding in, entry, if the corresponding entry in the matrix is zero. So the matrix tell us when similar states at the underlying system occur. The RP is obtained, the recurrence plot or RP is obtained by plotting uh, the ma recurrence matrix and using different color for its binary entries. Each, uh, for example, here we have plot the black dot uh, at the coordinate which we have a value of one and a white dot uh, in the corresponding array which we have a value of uh, zero. So every Every black points here represent the one at the recurrence matrix and every white dots represent the zero in our matrix. Here both axes are time and we can find information about the system by studying these recurrence plots. Here as an example, I have plot the, uh, the recurrence plot of uh, some FPU systems, for example, uh, for periodic system, there are uniform lines indicating periodic behavior of the system. And the distances between these uh, lines uh, of diagonal lines are constant, which is uh, proportional to the periods of the system. For random or arbitrary system, uh, there are no regular structure and black points are uniformly distributed in the plots. For Lorentz system, which is, is, is a, a, a stochastic system and it is a between uh, uh, arbitrary and it's a bit in, uh, and a periodic system, you can see that there are some regular structures, but there are not totally regular as a periodic system. The distances between diagonal lines are uh, not constant due to the multiple time scales present in the system. So based on this recurrence plot, we can find information about uh, our system, our, under, um, our study system. Here, for example, homogeneous RPs uniformly are typical of a stationary system in which the relaxation time uh, are short in comparison with the time spent by the recurrence plot. An example of such an RP is, is, is a stationary, which here you can see. Uh, periodic or Quasi-periodic systems have RPs with diagonal orientated or, um, uh, uh, or a regular structure. For example, the figure B shows the RP of a periodic system. Uh, if we have a drift in the system, uh, 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 this, uh, we have a small varying parameters. Uh, for example, if our system is non-stationary, the, the RP pales away pales away from the main diagonal lines. And if we have a, 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 a extensive uh, uh, events in the system, for example, if we have abrupt changes in this dynamical systems, here we can see that the white areas are happening in the systems and we have a block areas, uh, which in the block area we have a, the state of the system has repeated. So based on studying of this, uh, recurrence plot, we can find information from the system. But this is a, a, compar a qualitative comparison. To be able to have a quantitative comparison, we can quantify these regular structures by different parameters, which is called uh, a recurrence quantification analysis. Here I have uh, 
there, there are different parameters uh, uh, to quantifying these small structures and measure the complexity of RP structures. But here I have focused on the, uh, on the, info, on the information entropies of the distribution of these uh, black dot points. The measure uh, of entropy is based on the recurrence uh, on the diagonal and ver diagonal lines. The measure of entropy refers to the Shannon entropy of probability of distribution of these lines and can reflect the complexity of the system. For example, if we have a higher entropy values, it says that our system is more complex and the distribution or size distribution of these diagonal lines are more wider. If we have a low entropy values, it says that the system, uh, the, the size distribution of these diagonal lines is, is a narrow and our system is less complex relative to the, the, to the other systems. So based on this en en entropy, we can find how the points are distributed. Uh, but how we calculated this uh, entropy for our system? For entropy calculation in the tank, we have calculated entropy values for each of data points based on one second uh, forward time window in the trajectories. I mean that if we are going to calculate the, the entropy value at this point, we have considered one uh, seconds of time window of the trajectory and we have calculated uh, the distance matrix for each of these one seconds, uh, one second time window and then we converted this uh, time window into recurrence uh, matrix and then we have converted this to the recurrence plot and after that we calculated the entropy based on the e equations represented in the previous slide. So for each time and uh, each data point in the tank, we can calculate the entropy which shows the complexity of that point in the tank. After calculation of each data point, in order uh, to be able to show the results in the tank, we divided the, <coughs> the tank into equal value cells for each pass of the trajectory in the cells, we have calculated an average of values of entropies for each data points. Since in one cells we may have a several passage, we have calculated the average of uh, entropy of passes at the end, uh, at the cells, and we have <coughs> represented the entropy value at this point at this at these cells. Then in order to be able to show the entropy values in two, di two, two dimensional figures, we have averaged the entropy values, uh, uh, values for different azimuthal planes, uh, which are presented in the next S slides. I mean that we have divided into different azimuthal sections, then we have averaged the entropy values for different azimuthal planes. As I discussed before, the entropy is a measure, uh, a measure parameter for complexity of the system. So in the tank, it can be an index of complexity of the Lagrangian trajectory. We can say that, the, that higher entropy values is an index of higher mixing in the tank. Thus, it can be a way <clears throat> to measure the mixedness or the intensity of mixing in the tank allowing the identification of well-mixed and poorly mixed cells in the system. Here, uh, in this slide, you can find the radial axial entropy maps average for overall azimuthal planes at different rotational speeds uh, for, uh, for the impeller. And here is the impeller top is pitch plate impeller turbine. Uh, and we have considered down pumping modes Horizontal axis uh, is normalized a radial uh, distance and, uh, and the vertical axis is axial dimensionless distance in the tank. The impeller type is, uh, as I said before, is, is a pitch plate. In this uh, pumping mode, the float goes up uh, uh, close to the wall and, uh, 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 to the wall and goes down 
uh, near to the impeller shaft. These entropy maps are for tank containing of uh, just water as a single phase. And you can see that at lower RPMs, uh, only regions located uh, at the top of the impeller has a higher entropy values, or in other words, uh, at these regions, we have a higher mixing intensity. By increasing the RPMs uh, or the rotational space of the impeller, the entropy values of different cells increases. Uh, at the same time, the cells which have a high entropy values are widely distributed at higher RPMs which indicates that the high, at higher uh, RPMs, we have a higher mixing intensity in the, in the tank. Here is, it is a view from the top of the tank, and this uh, it is an entropy maps average over the different axial planes. And uh, actually, it is, it is a top view of the entropy maps in the tank. Uh, same as a previous slide, you can find that the entropy values of uh, uh, entropy values and dispersion of high entropy cells increases by impeller rotational speed. At 500 RPMs, uh, the red cells, uh, which uh, represent the high entropy values and the high entropy cells, and therefore with high mixing intensity, are totally dispersed in the whole tank, which indicate high high mixing performance in, in, in the, at the higher RPMs. Uh, here, the radial and axial uh, entropy maps are presented for different impeller types uh, uh, at the same uh, uh, impeller rotational space. Uh, all of them are at 300 RPMs. Uh, these impeller types are, uh, this is the previous one, pitch plate turbine, but down pumping, that they said the, there is a uh, upward movement close to the wall and downward movement to the close to the uh, impellers. And it is the uh, pitch plate turbine, but up pumping is the reverse, the, the rotation. Uh, down pump, uh, the up pumping mode, actually the impeller rotation direction has reversed and the Last one is this Rochdon disc turbine, which is actually a radial pumping impeller. You can find that the entropy values of higher RT, uh, are higher for RTD rather than uh, PBT impellers. For PBT impellers, uh, is, you can see that the down pumping has a higher entropy values. Uh, here is, is, is a uh, in this slide, you can see the radial azimuthal entropy maps of different impellers, uh, uh, impeller types similar to the previous slide. Uh, the entropy values uh, of RTD impeller is higher and show that the RTD mixing performance is, is better than pitch plate turbines. So it, this uh, methods can be a, 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 a index for measuring uh, the in, intensity of mixing. But uh, as you, 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 you saw in the previous slides, this uh, is a qualitative comparison. If we are be able to have a quantitative comparison uh, and to have a global uh, index for entropy values in the system, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, have a qualitative comparison for local entropy values for different conditions. In order to have a quantitative uh, comparison for different impellers and different RPMs, we need a global entropy for the tank. For this purpose, uh, we have developed a global uh, measure of mixing intensity in the tank. As uh, I, I explained in the data analysis sections, we have divided the tank into equal volume cells. Here, uh, suppose we have uh, N cells, uh, with the equal volumes of V, uh, with the equal volume of each cell is V zero, uh, total entropy of the tank is equal to the summation of the volume of fraction of each cells by its entropy value. Since the cells are equal volumes, the equation is summarized to average entropy of whole cells. So this E, total can be an index for a uh, whole mixing intensity in the system. I have calculated the 
global entropy values uh, for different uh, impeller types and, and different RPMs, you can see that for all impeller types, uh, the global mixing index uh, increased by RPMs uh, or, or increases by impeller rotational speeds. Uh, at the same time, we can find that at same RPMs, the global mixing index is higher for RTD or Rushton turbine disc rather than PBT down pumping and PBT up pumping. This indicates higher mixing performance of RTD relative to the PBT impeller type. So it can be a very easy and a, 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 a global index for comparing the mixing performance in the system. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, I can say that a new methodology has been uh, uh, proposed based on a window recurrence plot quantification analysis, and uh, we can study the local and global mixing performance in a batch steric vessels. Uh, here I have presented just for a uh, single phase. I told you uh, before that we have tried with the multi-phase flow because we can, in the multi-phase flow, we can track the liquid phase and uh, solid phase separately and we can repeat this calculation for both of uh, both phases and then we can compare the mixing intensity of uh, both phases. But here this I have uh, showed the, for the single phase. Uh, global mixing index uh, increases by increase in rotational speed of the impeller and the global mixing index showed that the uh, performance of different impeller are different and RT here the RTD is, is uh, uh, it's in mixing intensity or mixing performance is higher than PBT down pumping and PBT, PBT up pumping. So we can uh, find detailed information on the global as well as local mixedness of the system allowing the identification of well mixed and poorly mixed cells uh, in the system. Uh, at the end, uh, I, uh, mm, uh, I thank you for your attention to this presentation and I will be happy to hear your, uh, your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chia. Uh, thank you for your excellent uh, presentation and share us out your research work. Uh, yeah, any question from our attendees? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe I can uh, first uh, ask a question and wait for other attendees to type in the chat box. Uh, I wonder, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you uh, define a new uh, mixing description method, uh, but if we're using your method, uh, what is the computational uh, cost of your, of your method compared to other computational methods? Uh, we it uh, be any benefit in the computational resource requirement? Uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to say there is a very simple calculation in the system that uh, it's, it's necessary to calculate the distance matrix, which is very easily we can compare the distance matrix between each data points and it's, it's not a computational intensive and we can do it very easily. After that, by comparing this distance matrix and converting to the RP is, is, is much easier. It's, I mean, that it's not a computational uh, intensive and it's very uh, simple algorithm and it is uh, uh, quick. And the other advantages is here we have, uh, we can compare the mixing as a Lagrangian approach because as I said, the mixing is intrinsically, it, 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 this is a Lagrangian process and we cannot, uh, get uh, useful information or good information from the Eulerian data points. Uh, so here, the other advantage is here, we have a mixing index based on the Lagrangian process and we can find at each point of our system what's the mixing intensity of the, uh, our system. Okay, thank, thank you very much mm -hmm. for, for answer. Any new question? from our attendees. Uh, uh, maybe or you, uh, our attendees can raise your hand. It will be more quicker for me to notice you. 
uh, yeah, I think during this time, I want to ask one more question uh, and weigh our attendees. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, want, I wonder which uh, software uh, is, uh, can run your method, uh, because uh, I, I don't know how to uh, embed your algorithm or method into the software. Or is this method can be used in the commercial software like the uh, Fluent, NCS Fluent, or uh, or we need to use it in uh, some open access uh, software? Uh, actually, we have developed our course in the MATLAB. Uh, as I said, mm -hmm. it's not a cost in intensive uh, um, uh, algorithm. It's very simple, and we have developed our system in the MATLAB and with. With the normal computers, it, it takes just uh, maybe a few hours, uh, or maybe it depends on the, the how much data points we have uh, in that our trajectory for our system, which we have a 40 or 50 sec for 50 minutes of the trajectory, the computation takes maybe few minutes, maybe 10 or 20 minutes in, in the normal computer, and we have used the MATLAB codes. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any new question from our attendees? Okay, yeah, I think so far we didn't receive any new question. Uh, thank you, Chia. Thank you for your, for your sharing your research. Yeah. And